hello student welcome back we are going to start the session module 3 lecture 2 satellite communication mece 106a shongita roy assistant professor electronics and communication engineering department narula institute of technology so it is a continuation of lecture 1 module 3 so in the previous class we have already started this topic and it is the continuing of the process. The topic we have covered in the previous class and today will be satellite subsystems, communication, telemetry, ranging and command. So what we have studied we have, we have to recapitulate of that and then we will jump to our today's topic communication satellite incorporates various subsystems whose function in principle are distinct it is customary to distinguish the communication payload from the platform or service module that support and powers the payload the organization of these platforms are the requirements of the communication payload the nature and effect of the space environment the performance of launchers and the constraint which they impose on that. Because satellite is very far from earth station, so lot of precaution has to be incorporated and lot of environmental issues are related to that. This is a satellite at the orbit. So this is the antenna module and three tire repeater module and the service module. The goal of this design is to minimize mass because it is the outside of the earth. So the costing will be very much as well as sometimes impossible if the mass is very high or weight is very high. Minimum consumption of energy because energy source is limited over there because as the energy source in, uh, is heavy then total mass will also increases proportionately high reliability therefore reliability should be as much high as possible or full proof this should be the satellite subsystems are AOCS attitude and orbit control propulsion system power supply TTC telemetry tracking and command thermal control and structure and these are the functions and their characteristics the AOCS characteristics are accuracy and its function is attitude stabilization orbit determination propulsion provision of velocity increment and its characteristics is specific impulse mass of propellant electric power supply provision of electric energy power and voltage stability corresponding. TTC, telemetry tracking and command provides exchange of housekeeping information, number of channels, security of communication, its, its characteristics. Thermal control, temperature maintenance, dissipation of capability because as it is a very high velocity moving body around earth, so temperature increases enormously and as it is exposed to sunlight, so lot of heat are generated so heat dissipation should be there or thermal stability should be there because sometimes are there when the uh, these satellites are just away from sun or it is in the shadow of earth then temperature decreases heavily and sometimes minus in the negative side a huge deterioration of temperature so in the daytime when it is daytime means when it is exposed to sun, sunlight then temperature increases enormously at the same time when under the shadow of earth temperature decreases also enormously so this fluctuation of temperature should be capable that the satellite should be capable of maintaining this structure should be equipment supported and rigidity as well as lightness should be there so telemetry tracking command and onboard data handling these are we have already covered this frequency used 
then telecomment links. So these are the block diagram of a TTC subsystem. Telemetry links. Telecomment and telemetry message format standard. These are mainly they follow TCP IP protocol that is two OSI models. These are the different standards. These are the standard packet. Packet standards are described over there. Telecom and data structure, how the packet formats are, these are given in detail. This is also packet, how the encapsulation is done, it is shown over there. So these are the earth station as well as satellite station means how the transmitter and receiver, they are taking care of this telemetry, it is shown over there, one source, one receiver. So this is the just complementary arrangement, reversible. So onboard data handling systems are common processing, acquisition, compression, coding, formatting and processing of data. Therefore data as well as comment has to be processed. Onboard data handling, storage data, synchronization, monitoring and control. And this is the adaptation of the internet protocol of satellite communication protocol. Centralized architecture, modular architecture, data bus interface and protocols. These are the satellite controls, how it is achieved. It is shown over there. Today are going from this session. So we are starting from tracking. Tracking means the how this satellite will track our station because it is changing. It is a moving object. Some geostationary satellites are there as well as some non-geostationary satellites also there. So tracking system should be as strong as possible. So distance range measurement. Distance measurements is performed by means of specific subcarriers which modulate the telecomment carrier are coherently demodulated in the receiver and are then used to modulate the telemetry carrier comparison of the initial phase of the signals with the phase of the demodulated signals on the ground enables the round trip time to be obtained this time from which the precisely known the time delay in the receiving equipment is deducted permits the distance of the satellite to be calculated. Now page number is given over there. Last day I also shown the reference number 2, the page number 593. It is a book, standard book you can find from the reference and you can easily available in the internet. So various approaches are possible depending on the nature of the carrier. This induced fixed frequencies that is to tone variable frequency and modulation by a pseudo random PN sequence etc. The tone system is currently used. In this case the sub carrier is a sinusoidal wave of fixed frequency F. Measurement of the phase shift between the transmitted and the received tones which is a function of the distance r from the station of the satellite a round trip trajectory of 2 r enables this distance to be determined and this is given by del phi the frequent the change of phase angle is given by 2 pi f twice r by c c is the velocity of life f is the frequency Operated frequency r is the distance. So distance ambiguity del r as a function of tone frequency f is given over a chart. f versus change uh, in distance in kilometer. If the tone frequency is 100 kilohertz, then change in distance is 1.5 kilometer. And 
so on. So as the frequency is decreasing, the change in distance also increasing inversely. So high frequency should be maintained as far as possible. So as phase shift is a measurement of modulo twice pi, the measurement is the from here it is clear that as the phase shift is a measurement of twice pi, the measurement is the same for all values of r such that 2 pi f 2r by c that is to 2 k pi where k is an integer. The distance ambiguity del r corresponds to the distance tone used. Observe that for a geostationary satellite, the frequency of the tone must be at most 8 Hz for the measurement to be made without ambiguity. The choice of the tone frequency is thus guided by conflicting <coughs> consideration. A high frequency 100 kHz is necessary to ensure accuracy of phase measurement. Conversely, the frequency must be low enough for the wavelength to be long enough with respect to the distance to be measured for there to be no ambiguity. The difficulty is avoided by transmitting two tones simultaneously. These are a major tone at 100 kHz which permits good measurement accuracy and a minor tone obtained by divisible of the major tone Hence, the procedure is as follows. The major tone at 100 kHz is the first transmitted with the first minor tone at 20 kHz that is divisible by 5. On the reception, the minor tone is compared with the 5 signal separated in phase by 2 pi by 5 which are obtained by division by 5 of the received major tone. Only one of these signals in phase with the received minor tone and the and is it is shown over this figure. So this is the principal tone range, range measurement. So the frequency here is 100 kilohertz. So it is a timing diagram, nothing but it is a timing diagram shown over there. So these are different uh, pulses as it is going on continuously. So it is the 0th phase, it is 2 pi by 5 phase, it is 4 pi by 5, it is 6 pi by, it is 6 pi by 5, it is 8 pi by 5. So it is different phase angle, it is transmitted. So division by 5 giving sub multiples at 20 kilohertz in phase with 100 kilohertz before comparison with the 20 kilohertz tone. So this is nothing but a comparison system. So it is 20 kilohertz it is passing. So phase correlation and division selection and ultimately replica of the 20 kilohertz tone with 100 kilohertz accuracy it is performed. So from the figure B it is a satellite it is ambiguity resolution it is another ambiguity resolution it is uh, by 5 it is also by 5. So 100 kilohertz it is going to satellite. So it is divided by it is divided by five. It is also divided by five. Then it is multiplied, multiplexed or modulated with 20 kilohertz. And from here another 16 kilohertz is generated. Again it is modulated. Then 16008 hertz it is generated. So it is nothing but different subcarriers are generated. So this is division divided by five. It is another divided means it is continuously division by five and then modulation division by five and modulation. So different sub carrier are producing finally 32 hertz. It is generated after 32 hertz. It is again subdivided producing eight hertz. So ambiguity resolution is producing over there and from here a same reference pulse is generated so that it is how the accuracy is maintained. It is going by this total system. So spectrum of the telemetry carrier modulated signal.
So, this figure shows an example of the spectrum of the signal which modulates the telemetry carrier sub carrier modulated by the data rate of 40.96 kilohertz or the telecommand carrier sub carrier modulated by a data of 8 kilohertz so it is the main carrier and it is in between sub carrier so these are the major tones and it is the sub carrier the minor tones are transposed in frequency between 16 and 20 kilohertz measurement accuracy depends on tone frequency and the received signal to noise ratio the stability of the transit time in the satellite equipment and variation of the propagation time in the ionosphere for a tone of frequency f the root mean square is given by this so before that how the major and minor tones they are divided by and producing the minor tones it is showing over there if the major tone is 100 kilohertz so it is after division by 5 division by 5 it is generating the minor tone of 20 kilohertz it is producing 4 kilohertz it is producing 800 hertz it is 160 hertz it is 32 it is 8 so transmitted tone will be 20 kilohertz 16 kilohertz 16, 1608 16.8 kilohertz 16.16 kilohertz 16.032 kilohertz 16.008 kilohertz so measurement accuracy depends on the tone frequency the received signal to noise ratio stability of the transmit time in the satellite equipment and variation of the propagation time in the ionosphere for a tone of frequency f the root mean square value of the distance error is given by this s is equal to c divided by 4 pi f k square root of s by n where k is equal to square root of s by p is the quadratic mean value of the phase error and a function of the constant k which depends on the structure of the received signal used and signal to noise ratio is the uh, main criteria over there which keeps the system stabilized at the phase detector input variation of the tropospheric propagation time can cause an error between 0 to 300 meter at a 2 gigahertz but this can be estimated separately distance measurement can be performed with an error of the order of a few tens of meter so one thing should be clear from there whatever we have studied over there it is a just concept we are giving so don't think that how they are coming it is beyond scope of this topic so you have to learn this measurement of radial velocity range velocity radial velocity can be obtained by measurement of the Doppler effect it is necessary to ensure frequency and phase co uh, coherence of the transponder between the downlink and uplink carriers the nominal frequency fd of the downlink carrier is such that the ratio of downlink frequency to uplink frequency is equal to 240 divided by 221 it is they, these are all standard you have to remember this where fu is the nominal frequency of the uplink carrier if the satellite is given by is driven by a velocity of vr with respect to the control station the frequency received on board is equal to fu is equal to fu 1 plus vr by c hertz the frequency retransmitted on the downlink is obtained by multiplication by a ratio of 240 by 221 that generated 240 by 221 fu 1 plus vr by c whole square in hertz taking account of the very small value vr with respect to c this has finally producing 240 by 221 fu 1 plus 2 vr by c so we are just 
simplifying the equation. The radial velocity is thus obtained as a function of the frequency difference del f between the received frequency fd star and the nominal frequency fd on the downlink fd is equal to 240 divided by 221 fu vr is equal to minus c by 2 221 by 240 del f by fu meter per second measurement of the radial velocity requires operation of the transponder in coherent mode which can be different from the normal non-coherent mode where the downlink carrier is obtained from an onboard oscillator. Mode selection is achieved by telecommand, thermal control and structure. The purpose of the thermal control is to maintain the satellite equipment within the temperature ranges which enable it to operate satisfactorily by providing its normal performance and avoiding any irreversible deterioration when it is not operating. This also applies to the structure of the satellite which must remain within a mean temperature range in order to maintain deformation and guarantee precise alignment of the attitude stabilization sensors and antennas. Thermal control must be optimized with respect to the constraint of both the operational and transfer phases. These constraints are very different due to different orbits and attitude, the state of the apogee motor, etc. The objectives of thermal control are thus to maintain the equipment within specified temperature ranges. This differed from equipment when operating and when and standby. Further, the behavior of the equipment may differ depending on whether it is operating or at rest. In operation, it is usually generates heat which the thermal control must remove. When at rest, the equipment must, in certain cases, be heated in order to avoid an excessively low temperature. Finally, the maximum values of temperature gradient must also be considered. Specified temperature ranges. The Temperature ranges to be maintained differ greatly from one piece of satellite equipment to another. Antenna should be maintained 1 minus 150 degree Celsius to plus 80 degree Celsius. Electronic equipment minus 30 degree Celsius to 55 degree Celsius on standby and plus 10 degree to plus 45 degree on operating condition. Solar generator minus 160 degree to plus 55 degree centigrade. Battery from minus 10 degree to plus 25 degree centigrade standby. And for operating 0 degree to 10 degree centigrade. Solar sensor minus 30 degree centigrade to 50 plus 55 degree centigrade. Propellant uh, reservoir 10 degree to plus 55 degree centigrade. Pyrotechnic unit minus 170 degree Celsius to 55 degree Celsius. Characteristics of the space environment. The characteristics of the space environment are presented in previous module. As far as the thermal control is concerned, the most useful characteristics are recalled in figure 3.8. It must be remembered that the satellite is subject to effects of three radiation sources. Which have different spectral distribution and geometric forms and are absorbed differently by the surface of the satellite. 
eclipses and variations of attitude and distance modify the illumination condition over the course of time. Cold space absorbs all radiation from the satellite. The ambient vacuum prevents convection. So this is a schematic earth and sun. So this can be seen that sometimes if the satellite when it is moving sometimes it gets very hotter at sometimes when it comes over there it becomes very cold this is the solar radiation vacuum heat radiation towards cold space infrared radiation from earth then exit from eclipse umbra penumbra and this is the beginning of eclipse so the so satellite is under different conditions of environment when it is passes around earth the principle of thermal control the mean temperature of a piece of equipment is the rest result of an equilibrium between the heat generated internally the heat absorbed and radiated by the surfaces of the unit and the heat received or removed by conducting through the mechanical mounting of the equipment the mean temperature of the satellite is a result of equilibrium between the heat generated internally and the heat absorbed by the surface of the satellite and the heat radiated by the surface of the satellite. Now the passive control. Passive control is based on the absorption and emission properties of surfaces. Absorbity is A is defined as the ratio of the power absorbed by the unit surface area to the incident power. Emissivity epsilon is defined as the ratio of the power radiated per unit surface area to the power which would be radiated by unit surface area of a black body. So it is coming here black body radiation what we have studied in class 12 standard that is you have to recall those. So this ideal black body radiation in watt per meter square is rho t to the power 4 where rho t is the temperature of the black body in Kelvin rho is 5.67 into 10 to the power minus 8 watt per meter square or Kelvin k to the power minus 4 in the Stephen Boltzmann constant. These are already you have studied this. It is a recapitulation. Depending on the material, use the value of absorbity alpha and the emissivity epsilon vary between 0 to unity. Now the types of surfaces. Various type of surface can be used. White paint absorbed infrared radiation, black paint absorbed all wavelengths but it is characterized by high emissivity. Aluminium paint absorbs little and emits little. Polished metal absorbs the visible part of the solar spectrum, solar absorbers but reflects infrared radiation. So depending on the material is chosen from there so lot of criteria as they are not all are studied over there it is a huge study so radiating surfaces for communication equipment which dissipates heat radiator having a very low absorbity to emissivity ratio as used these surfaces are therefore capable of efficiently radiating the heat generated while absorbing the least possible solar radiation. These radiations are strips of silica silvered on the reverse side or the produced from the sheets of plastic material with the deposit of silver or aluminium on the reverse face. Now the active control. This is used to complement passive control and may consist mainly of 
the electric resistance heaters controlled by thermostats or by command movable shutters more or less converting covering the radiating surface and controlling by temperature transducer or by command so this may be by command or by software ignitation or by any temperature transducer may be there three heat pipes which can also be classed as passive thermal controller that transfer heat from hot points to radiators under a small temperature difference by means of successive vaporization and condensation of a fluid at the two extremities of a tube so it is shown in the figure so the vapor is generated from there it is evaporated then liquidification condensation then again so this is a continuous process so from here heat generated and it is condensation process then heat transfer through heat sink so principle of operation this is and the temperature operating how it is uh, different uh, gaseous steps how the temperature changes it is shown over there now the structure the function of this subsystem can be classified as mechanical geometrical and other function so the mechanical <coughs> supports the onboard equipment particularly during the launching phase when the mechanical constant imposed by the launcher are highest permitting the various separation and deployments which change the satellite from its launch phase configuration to its operational configuration and accepting the forces acting during this operations now geometrical function the geometrical function are related to the requirements of the surface from and volume of the satellite they are to provide sufficient mounting surface for the satellite equipment to reserve sufficient volume between the satellite and fairing to accommodate folded appendices to provide sufficient accessibility of equipment during integration of the satellite the guarantee precise and stable location of equipment particularly sensor and antennas now the other functions other functions follows to provide a reference potential for the equipment to guarantee the same potential at different parts of the satellite in our order to avoid uncontrolled electrical discharges to satisfy the requirements for thermal control and to protect components from radiation and high energy practical flux material used the essential material qualities of this subsystems are contradictory resistance to deformation and lightness since the forces along the principal axis of the satellite are in principle the greatest an architecture based on a central tube which contains the solid apogee motor or the propellant reservoirs in the case of unified propulsion is often adopted current te technique permits the structure mass not to exceed about 5% of the total mass of the satellite this is achieved by using alloy of aluminum and magnesium honeycomb panels bond assemblies and composite material based on carbon filters the use of beryllium is limited on account of its prohibition tip to cost means very high cost so we are going to conclude the session for this in this we have what we have studied have defined the observation and techniques of the thermal control and its impact on the structure of the satellite the impact of the choice of attitude stabilization procedure on the design of the thermal control subsystem and the general organization of the structure of the emphasized the type of propulsion system also influence the architecture the problems are very different for a spin stabilized satellite and three axis stabilized satellite rotation of the spin stabilized satellite ensures uniform exposure condition for the 
lateral faces of the satellite body to the various sources of radiation. This is not the case for three axis stabilized satellite. So this is a very vast topic we have to cover within these two lectures. But it is a really synopsis what we have studied. So now the development and the new trends. The development of satellite communication has been considerably during the late 30 years or late 40, maybe main work is last 30 to 40 years. This has resulted in an increase in the size and power of satellite. The Intelsat 1 satellite has a mass of 40 kg at the beginning of life and the electric power available on board was 33 watts. At the end of 1980s, Intelsat 6 satellite weighted 25 kg, 25, uh, uh, 2500 kg on board with a power of 2200 watt. This corresponds to a geostationary transfer orbit mass of 4170 kg. Then in response to the increased communication requirement during the recent years, larger and larger communication satellites were considered. So as it is going on, it is high demand because satellite communication is the new trend. So lot of uh, modification we are going to expect in future and more heavy satellite has to be placed in orbit so, so that lot of information can be processed over there. So based on this, we are going to conclude today's session and this is the reference. So we are basically using reference to, you can also avail other references shown over there or you can choose any book from NET or you study this material, no problem. So we are ending the session. Thank you.